What up, D-League? Welcome to week 13. I debated on if I should do this preview drunk and pissed off or hungover and depressed. I chose the latter. If you ever get the opportunity to watch your team lose in amazing detail on one of the largest screens on Earth, feel free to pass. On that note, let's start the show. I'm going to start off by taking a look at how I did last week in picks. Well, I'm doing my best to kill pretty much any shot I have of staying above 500 in picks. This week I only got three right, although I did call that Vincent Jackson would get hurt right away, and that Colin would fuck me over in the end. I wasn't aware that I'd be up six points going into a Monday night game with Philip Rivers still to go and Colin having a kicker to go and end up losing that matchup. Clearly, I've underestimated the type of demons that Colin's been sucking off this season. And that brings us to the Rapist of the Week. Well, obviously we have a rapist. I'll take the rapists for 200. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. Rapist coming. Don't get raped. All right, our rapist of the week this week is Nate. It took Nate 12 weeks to learn how to rape, but he chose a target pretty much willing to roll over and take it after dropping four games in a row. I mean, how? what's another? Nate dropped a little over 30 points on Dave. Much like Colin, Nate's team is very boomer bust. Last week it was boom. And boom goes the dynamite. It also helps that Dave had three receivers who didn't break five points. But all in all, this was good work for Nate. Potentially ruining Dave's shot at the playoffs and possibly breaking his spirit. Let's take a look now at who our biggest loser is. Bitch, I'm about to ball this. of 48 and I'm what some people call mentally retarded. He was retarded. I'm a driver. I'm a winner. Things are going to change. I can feel it. Only reason I'm crying because of the adrenaline. <laughs> our loser of the week this week is Trav. Trav doesn't really like being a lock for a playoff spot. Trav likes to get real close and then fuck it up. That way he can be a wild card in the race. Pretty much the only thing more pathetic than Trav's 93 points is the fact that Jamie's squad of juggernauts barely beat him. I'd say something clever or witty here, but Trav's effort was funny enough. Alright, let's take a look now at trades and waivers. Oh, how I do love the final week of trading. It's always fun to break down 19 meaningless trades, most of them involving Adam or Travis. But let's get started. So, first off we have Adam sending Travis Thomas Jones for his third round pick in 2013 for Randy McMichael and Travis' second rounder in 2013. Basically, Adam's trying to trade off anything that's old and useful. If Trav makes it into the playoffs, this is probably a good pickup for him. If not, it wasn't really worth his time. Next up, we have Trav sitting Jamie, Brent Selleck, and Heath Miller for James Davis and Brandon Pettigrew. This trade's pretty silly. Trav gave up two tight ends that are better than the one he got back for a dice roll running back on a Shanahan team who was recently brought up from a practice squad. Apparently, James Davis hasn't let enough people down this season. He's going to try to get one more here with Trav. All right, next up we have Adamson and Jamie, David Akers for Delaney Walker and Trav's third round pick in 2011. So basically Adam gave the best team in the playoffs, the best kicker in the league, for a third round pick. So the first team to barely get beat by Jamie, they're going to know whose legs to go and beat for this. But that said, I'd sell pretty much any kicker and or Adam for a third round pick. Next up, we have Adamson and James Donovan McNabb and Dan's third rounder in 2011 for Bruce Kredkowski and my third rounder in 2011. Now Adam's just trying to waste my time. Seriously, swapping third round picks? Fucking riveting. All right, let's take a look now at our matchups. First up, we got Mind Grapes taking on KC Reunited. I'm coming into this at 5-7. and seven. Sean's coming into this at 6-6. Six and six. Sean's playoff hopes are basically dangling by a thread, and I'm holding the pair of scissors. This game actually matches up pretty well. Uh, quarterback, we have Rivers taking on Brady. I sure as shit hope last week was a fluke and Rivers comes out and takes it out on Oakland. Brady's a little dinged up and taking on the Jets, who hate him about as much as any team can hate a man. I feel like I have the advantage at quarterback, but Sean has me at wide receiver, which is actually pretty hard for me to say. Since nobody in Buffalo shot Stevie Jackson last week, it'll be interesting to see how he responds this week in Minnesota. Austin and Colston haven't been very consistent for me. And T.O. seems to be coming back around as of late. Edwards is still pretty hit or miss, as are his hands. 
In the end, I think I cut that string that holds Sean's playoff hopes away. Alright, next up we have Team Disenchantment taking on Rainbow Warriors. James is coming into this at 4-8, and eight. Dave's coming into this at 5-7. and seven. Welcome to our Toilet Bowl matchup of the week. If you've never seen a dumpster fire, you might want to tune in and give this one a go. In one corner we have a team who doesn't want to win. In the other corner we have a team that, despite his best efforts and superior team, can't seem to win. Although James did show great pride in wanting his team to win by making a hot deal to swap third rounders for an old quarterback so that way he could start him against Dave. Luckily, Dave has about a million picks because he does need a quarterback and a running back pretty bad next year to keep up with the Joneses or the Sirs. As for matchup at QB, as much as it pains me to say it, I would actually probably give Freeman the edge at home against Atlanta over McNabb in New York. The wide receiver, either Wayne or White, will probably outscore all three of James's wide receivers combined. This week, James is starting Welker, Rice, and some dude nobody's heard of. I'm actually pretty down on Dave's running backs. If Tolbert plays this week, I actually give James the edge at running back between him and Benson. Uh, and I definitely like Agons over Cooley at tight end. And Dave probably has the edge from there at special teams. I don't know why, and I can't believe I'm doing it, but I'm picking Dave to win again this week. I figure if he can't beat Nate, he should be able to at least beat the only thing worse. Alright, next up we have Golden Toes taking on Mavericks. Colin and Dan are both coming into this at 8-4. Welcome to our marquee matchup of the week. I never thought I'd see the day where Colin and Dan were the best game on the docket for the week. But it's a crazy world outside. It's actually going to be a tough one to call. Both of them have sold their souls to get where they are today. Colin has spit in the face of depth and draft picks. And Dan spit in the face of fair trade value. Both of which got them to 8-4 and four and in the playoff conversation. In a move I don't really like, Dan is sitting the quarterback who got him here. I understand why he's doing it but you don't bite the hand that feeds you. Either way, at the quarterback position, he's outmanned by Vic, who's pretty much playing out of his mind right now. Wide receiver, I actually like Colin better. Not based on the popularity of the names that are starting, but let's face it, Fitz has been worthless right now until Arizona fixes that hot mess of a quarterback situation they've got. Des is pretty dinged up, and he's been getting rattled lately. Deshaun Jackson's always a threat, and due to injuries, I think Mario Manningham may actually have a shot at making some waves this week. You know, Johnson's still a beast, and Harvin's still very hit or miss. It just comes down to if he's not feeling lazy and wants to play. I mean, his migraines are feeling better. Dan probably has him at running back. Run DMC's been having a decent season, but Peyton Hillis has just been going nuts lately. And Dan probably has the edge from tight end on down through special teams. In the end, I think Dan takes this one home. Alright, next up we have Select Company taking on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Jamie's coming into this at 9-3. and three. Nate's coming into this at 3-9. and nine. Jamie may have ran his course on humorous team names. This is one of his weaker efforts, other than maybe naming a boy after a girl's name, or a name that rhymes with a sibling. Jamie has his playoff spot locked up, so he probably doesn't care if he wins or loses, other than maybe for pride's sake. But this week he gets the boomer bust squad that took down Dave last week. Player for player, Jamie has him beat in every statistical category in every position. Nate did finally figure out where the waiver wire was last week and picked up Westbrook to start right in Jamie's face. I'm not sure Nate fully understands how funny it would be to pick up a former Eagle and have him break a foot off in Jamie's ass to win. Well, I do think Jamie probably takes this match. That said, if Lloyd and Rodgers goes crazy and Westbrook shows that he's got enough gas to run wild, Jamie could actually be in a shitload of trouble this week. Alright, next up we have Seppuku taking on Here Comes Treble. Adam's coming into this at 5-7. and seven. Travis coming into this at 7-5. and five. Well, here we go again. One of the better grudge matches in the league is actually going head-to-head -head again this week. Adam can remember back to what it feels like to beat Trav. Wait, no, he can't because he's never done that. Time and time again, Travis brings the hammer down on Adam. I don't think all the third-round picks in the world could save him this week. Breeze obviously dominates Castle at the quarterback position. At wide receiver, talent-wise, I think that Bolden, Bo, and Crabtree are better than Wallace, Knox, and Thomas. But points production-wise, I do think that it's a little closer with Adam having a slight edge. At running back, obviously, Adam takes this hands down over Goodson and Jones. I'd take Witten over Graham any day, but Trav does have the better special teams, as most special people do. But here's how bad I want this streak to continue. Given my track record of picking Adam's games, I'm actually going to select Adam to win this game. Good luck trying to win now, Adam. Uh, wrap that shit up, man. Well, kids, that's going to wrap it up for us this week. Anyway, good luck to everybody this week, and we'll see you next week.